Caleb, this is the house just behind me, and we're going to enter the house. This is the house as is, as it has been kept just after the arson attack by these Jewish terrorists. You see the three members of the family that have been killed in this arson attack, Saad, his wife Riham, and their 18-month-old baby, Ali. They died after a long agony. The only survivor is Ahmad, five at the time, now 10, lives with his grandfather, Hussein, in another house. And you see, it's almost like a memorial, and it's not. But it's almost like this, nobody's living here. It's the ghost of a terrible past, and nobody wants to live here. This is the window from where Amiran ben Ulyer, that Jewish convicted terrorist, threw the Molotov firebomb here inside the room. That's the main sleeping room. They were sleeping on the floor like many families in Palestine. You can see mattresses, covers. These are very, very flammable material in the heat of the summer, end of July 2015. It just burst in flame within seconds. Now, the son the sole survivor is staying with his grandfather. They live in a house nearby. The son is undergoing surgery every month or so in Israeli hospital because he's been burned as well. He carry the scars, mental and physical, of that terrible attack. And I spoke to the grandfather in his home, and this is what he told me. What I want for them is to catch all of the terrorists, these Jewish extremists, and put them in jail. Not just this one person, but the person that burned my family. I want him to sit in jail for the rest of his life. We don't have the death penalty here, but I wish that we did and that he would have received it. It's unfortunate he gets to remain alive. Ahmad is 10 now, and he knows everything that has happened. When I came back from court and told him about today's hearing, he said, what will this give me? Will it return my parents? Pierre, clearly this case is, even with this verdict, is, is far from finished. Right. I mean, for the grandfather, he says, until the end of my death, this is going to be my long agony, and this is going to be the long agony of my grandfather. And indeed, the tension between the Jewish settlers of uh, the illegal outposts around Duma and the residents of Duma, the 3,000 residents of Duma, is problematic up until today. Every day or so, they are trespassing into the fields of the Palestinians. Sometimes there are skirmishes. Sometimes they're just insults. But it is clear that the uh, tension, the hatred, still goes on. Now, uh, the grandfather doesn't hate the Jews or the Israelis per se. He makes a distinction between the young settlers of the hilltop, as they call themselves, and the rest, the bulk of the Israeli society. He's been working inside Israel for over 17 years in an Israeli uh, community village in the center of the country. He still has contact with his Israeli employer. He is still befriended with him. He makes the difference. However, however, the pain is going to last until the last day of his life, he stresses. Right. Now, of course, we should note the suspect says that his uh, conviction, his, his confession in this case was coerced by the uh, Shin Bet investigators, uh, and uh, perhaps these, the legal issues here are not fully concluded. Right, listen, there is a, a shin bet. Uh, you know, there's a lot of euphemism for the words of torture in the shin bet jargon. There is the physical moderate pressure, or there is the uh, needy investigation, as they call it now. And it is clear that the man who was convicted underwent a very uh, stressful inquiry under duress. However, the court stresses that most of the details that that man gave during the reenactment were so precise, they were out of his fresh memory, in a sense, so that he couldn't have made it up.
Right. Uh, Pierre Clochandler there in the village of Doomer. Thank you for that report. Thank <laughs> you.